Welcome back to the LEC for the final game in this best of three between G2 Esports and Koi. The winner will move on to face BDS tomorrow. See who will get a shot at entering the upper side of the playoffs bracket. Of course, reminder, you can lose twice. Whether that's a best of three or best of five at this stage, it does not matter. So a loss here for either side would be devastating, taking away the luxury of double a limb any further into this tournament. Ooh, Larson with the thumbs down. Big thumbs down. Saying that from Larson. G2 is going to take the L. Which, you know, to be fair, if we look worldwide, Cassante mid, uh, LCK, 80% win rate. LCS, 66.7% yep. win rate. LEC, 0% zero zero. win rate. Yeah. So Only played once now from Caps, isn't it? So not too hot. We'll see if they drop that. Because we're going to hot drop into draft. G2 is back on the blue side. Do they run it back? I think we'll get very similar bands that we've seen throughout the last two games. Things like the Draven taken away. Annie, Malphite. Malphite, Annie, yeah. We'll see if they take away... I mean, Koi can swap it up. They can take away Varus. Maybe G2 want to take away Jace. These are the kind of picks you're looking at. There's the Jace takeaway. I like the Jace takeaway. I think Varus is something that G2 will want to first pick. I don't think it was like the main issue in the last draft. It was mainly the top side falling apart. There's the Annie ban. We'll see if they decide to ban Malphite as well here, G2. Uh, I think it's a bit more powerful on red side because obviously you can ban away things like uh, the Silas, which are very... Uh, they obviously counters the Malphite. Alessandro taken away from Lawson. I mean, I think Alessandro was also a very big pick in the last game. Not only was it good setup for Malrang's jungle pool, but yeah, just really hard to make plays on sides when... It's so impossible to dive. I mean, the one time they tried, it was ended up in a triple kill for, for Koi. Yeah, and I think if G2 want to continue to play compositions similar to what they've played in Game 1 and Game 2, Lissandra is the premier champion for shutting down a lot of those more early to mid-game focused picks. Just mitigates dive threat, um, offers so much reliable hard CC that can stop you from diving. It's it's a fantastic thing to have. So for now, G2 going to pick up the Vi. Mm -hmm. Koi can just respond by taking away Zaya here if they want to save AD Gary. It's a good ult interaction, of course. They do take that Zaya, but maybe it does open up the world of possibility of Aphelios, of Jinx, of Caitlyn, you know. Picking Varus does make so you do win that lane. Cannon was banned. That's yeah. going to be instantly picked up for Shigenda. Of course, with the buffs, very powerful top laner on this patch. Provides a lot of team fight. Doesn't have that many counters in lane either. Look at things like, you know, Jace, Irelia as the ones that can really do damage to the cannon. Yeah, and I think that when you came into the year, Shigenda wasn't necessarily the player that you expected to be enabled so consistently from Koi, but over this entire draft, it's been the Jace, uh, it has been the Kennen, clearly Koi, a lot of faith in him individually. Of course, the picks they're giving him are strong on a meta level, but you have to execute as well. So now we have a Kennen, a Wukong, and you've talked about it, one of the strongest junglers on the patch. We've seen incredible results in the LCK, in the LPL. I don't like it that much personally, but yeah. when this champion pops off, it really pops off. Ari, Ari, Ari is what's on my mind now because she works so well with both these junglers and Lissandra's band. That's normally the answer to the Ari. So something like Ari Nautilus here for G2 could do pretty well, but they want to take the Varus at the moment. They might want to match top two, see what uh, Broken Blade has in store for us. But I, I have a feeling that Koi might drop their bot lane to 4-5 and just look to pick up something like a Severe. See if they want to go for something like, I mean, Zaya's up, Zeri's up. There's so many AD carries that they can choose from that looking topside right now seems to be their focus. And even if they ban Zaya and Zeri, and the Zaya feels like a must ban if it's not going to get picked up here, then we still can go down to the next tier of AD carries, which in this case are premier AD carries, things like Aphelios that are seeing so much play across right. the world. So the Ari is going to get locked in as you predicted, could not give that one up to the side of Koi. Maybe freeze up Koi to grab a bot lane pick here, or could just look to match the Ari. Yeah, I think Akali is something I'm thinking of. LeBlanc could be something that Larson goes for, does pretty well into the Vi, makes it, as much as he has that lockdown, you can double dash away, so you take yeah. her really far on the ult. A hugely mechanical matchup, a lot of outplay potential. Instead, it is going to be the Sivir. Sivir paired with the Wukong, paired with the Kennen, makes it pretty much impossible to keep that Varus safe. Yeah, looks like they're gonna counter pick support. I think Gregas or something like that would be a nice ban right now. Um, Jarvan, as much as it sounds like maybe a useless ban because Broken Blade, uh, Yike has Vi already, I feel like Jarvan top is something that maybe G2 would look for. Jarvan support, there's Malphite, anything they can get on top of Sivir, any kind of hard, en hard engage. Uh, but they could also just go for something like Malphite, Gregas, give Kennen a bit of an easier time. G2 can look to target that mid lane pool if they feel like there's counters to the RA at the moment. Lissandra being down, mentioned uh, things like the LeBlanc, the Akali. And really want to see how Broken Blade is going to fare uh, in this individual 1v1 because he has not been coming out on top in CS. In, in game one, he certainly had more impact, but in game two, he was getting obliterated, almost in isolation. So really need to see a bigger performance from him in this game. And while the Pantheon, I don't think it's going to rear its head this time around, we need to see how deep his champion pool goes, what answer he has into the Kennen, because Kennen notoriously a super oppressive laner. It is. Broken has been playing a lot of jacks this split. We've even seen things like the Kled, the Karma, wacky picks. G2 Classic, last band coming in here for G2. 
could look to target something like a Braum if they want to blind something like Nautilus, but there's the Blanc Band trying to limit Larson's champion pool. I think TF is something I'm also thinking of, maybe as an option if Larson wants to play for some kind of roam heavy to cover the side lanes, but TF cannon not something you normally look into. Yeah, Doesn't really be. synergize that well. You need something that can get really stuck in in the fights. Can be a bit tricky too if you start to fall behind a mid lane at all. Instead, it's going to be probably this Akali locked in. You talked about it already. Mm, I, I think they could, should have gone for the block Akali ban, but maybe the Silas ban is preemptive as to what they're going to pick on 4 5 here. Something like Nautilus, something like Alistar could work really well into Sivir. Also, knocks Cannon away, knocks the Akali away. I think Alistar actually has a lot of value in this draft, but the problem is they can play a pretty heavy counter in the lane. You're drafting more there for, for comp because. Uh, for team comp, because your bot lane is probably going to struggle in the lane phase itself. This crank into Sivir, not the greatest, of course, because of the spell shield interaction on the hook. Limits your options, hooking a Kennen in, hooking a Wukong in. But there's a the Jarvan top. Wow. I think no surprise there when you're playing something like Sivir. They were scared more of things like the Malphite and the Olaf. I'm still surprised. I'm impressed. Good call, Gadriel. Good read on the potential Sivir, or the rather the Jarvan uh, top angle it, coming in it, here. It can be used in two ways, right? You can you can ult the Kennen to stop him from getting in the fights. And it looks Ooh. like it's going to be Jarvan support. Yeah, I think top support is something where they could have placed it. And it's going to be Gregas top into Kennen. Now, what does Trimby pick? I think Tom Kench could do pretty well. You know, we haven't Vi, Jarvan, Gregas. You've got so many champions who essentially want to leap onto a single yeah. champion. In this case, if you can protect your Sivir yeah. or your Kennen, you eat a Kennen while he's alt and you're having a great time. I mean, could get something to go in. Leona works too, but... The Leona game one wasn't great. I think this interaction is a little bit better. This matchup can be a little bit more favorable. Instead, Thresh, Thresh the Lantern, classic counter into the J4. I think in terms of mid to late game reliability, Thresh not quite as powerful as the Tom Kench, but in terms of early game, certainly brings a lot more to the lane phase. The ability to flay uh, the flag and drag from Jarvan is, is massive for early trades. To be honest, I like Koi's draft. I like the way they've maneuvered around G2. They've got Ken and Wukong, great team fight. Larson will solo play. Comp and Trimby will play together to avoid the Jarvan. Vi Gragas dive. We'll see if he can spell shield the Vi ult or if Yike can smite it as he's about to land. That's a really interesting interaction to track. But G2, again, very heavy kind of early mid game. Not as much as like a level 1, 2, 3, 4 spike like the Pantheon we saw earlier. Yeah. More so like a level 6 draft. Varus, Ari, Jarvan, Vi. You really want to start burning summoners in the early stages and then using your ults at level 6 to punish that afterwards. And I think in the first few levels, their champions do have a few more skirmishing tools necessary than the, uh, the, the opposition. But overall, Feels like another draft where if G2 do not snowball a lead, it's kind of all eyes on Han Sama. Han Sama, the one really big scaling damage threat. There's a world, of course, where Yike gets ahead and the Gragas can be that bigger threat, or the Ari gets ahead, but the one reliable late game threat on their composition is Han. We'll have to see if he can bring this one home, because on the opposite side, it is team fight powerhouse for the side of Koi. Mid lane, the only exception, but if Larson gets a comfortable landing phase, we know he'll make good on that pick. He will indeed. Can't afford to lose his best of threes, want to keep the win streaks alive, but we're ready for game three, G2 versus Koi. I think those chants tell you the story very well. There's a 1v1 there. There's an absolute 1v1 there. Face to face. I respect them keeping it civil. And it's not stopping anytime soon, and I imagine it'll be a similar case in this game. Of course, for uh, the side of Koi, I've kind of highlighted it already, but a lot of really good scaling options here, certainly. We'll see how the individual landing phase plays out, because Shigenda, uh, overall can just take over this lane. They've opted to give Broken Blade the Gragas. Yeah, see two wards there from Koi already in the bot side river. Gonna be scared of any kind of early game shenanigans. Yike's gonna start towards his top side. Marang's gonna solo the Wolves. Um, I mean, looking at pushing lanes, I mean, you expect obviously the range champs to get the push in most cases. Caps can control the wave. Shigenda's just being a nuisance, getting some information, spotting as to where Yike is. Not gonna place a wall down. He knows he's there. There's no real use in doing that. Better to save that for a little bit later on when he's afraid of a gank. Does Maori? Is he going to blue here with the blast cone? 
No, he's going to the enemy red. Or he's going... Is he level 2 ganking? There's no way he's level 2 ganking on Wukong. I'm sorry, did you just tell Malrang there's no way is he's he, level 2 ganking? This is just... Do you know who this man is? So what's Trimby gonna do here? He's gonna play for the flay. Nice flay. Ignite comes down. Knight going down on the Mickey, and here comes the monkey oh, into the w. back line. Took W. Doesn't have E? He does okay. have E. He used it already. Oh, Comp Ooh, tried to flash, flash with the back forward. half of the Q. Hands, nerves of steel. So, Flash Ignite traded from Koi. Exhaust and Flash traded from G2. Overall, pretty even. And now Yike knows that red buffs up. The problem that Malrang has is he doesn't know where Yike is. His assumption is Yike cleared his top camps and he's moving bot side towards his red to cover his bot lane. No, Yike's actually going to his top camps and taking them away. So pings by Malrang here, actually suspecting that maybe he's up towards that top side. See if Yike wants to put a gank up there, try to limit some of what Shigenda can do here in these early levels. Already a small CS lead for in favor of the Kennen, taking over to level three as well. This is kind of as expected early on. Probably gonna have to burn health and spells just to catch CS where he can. Last, ooh, stun coming through. Some nice trades there. The attack speed helping out the Kennen a lot. He needs to be careful, but this is the problem that Shigenda has. Yes, he's winning trades. Jungler's bot side though. Yike probably top side. How aggressive does he want to play this? Larson getting chunked out a lot here. Obviously, when you're playing Doran Shield and Second Wind, the lower health you are, the more regen you get. So sure. holding that potion as long as possible is what you want to look for. But when you fall below 20%, you may as well pop it in case of a gank. So now Marang will see Krugs are up, Raptors are up. He's going to try and take this red. Is Yike in time? Does Yike Q over and do the Raptors? Or does he go towards the red? And then the ward is there. Knows he's there. can try to steal the big Raptor here, but there's just not much of an angle. So Marang spending a lot of time, committing a lot of resources, but is not spotted. Cavs baited into a false sense of security here, but still playing to the top side of his lane, knowing that Malrang was on the bottom side, so not trying to give up too much. Charm is going to connect on Larson. Cavs get some good follow of damage, but now Malrang coming in. Cavs, is he going to be forced to flash out here? Uh, no way. Should be all right. W move speed should get him out of this when it's up. Ward's going to be placed down. See Malrang do this crab. Malrang only done three camps right now. This will be his fourth. Yikes, already level four. Moving towards this crab, maybe moving towards the bot side. There is a ward, but there's no flash on the comp. Trimby should have the lantern. Yep. Cavs, Cavs trying to steal, steal it away. 13 HP. Cavs going to the crab. Oh, get the crab. Oh, Cavs. Reached auto attack. 66 gold. The Cavs hits him with the emote. He has E up, has Q. I don't think he has the damage though. He could flash, he's gonna but speed him out. Wait. Maybe dive. Maybe it's a dive. Broken Blade's gonna base. He needs to TP back quickly, or his mid laner's in trouble. <laughs> Shigenda wants it. He needs to get the cannon down though. It's absolute chaos. Caps. The TP coming in is big. Broken Blade having that cooldown is gonna keep Caps alive. It's gonna stop the dive and its tracks. That could have been disastrous. Yeah. But Caps takes away the objective. Can TP back to mid lane. Happy oh. to have the scuttle crab. This is so bad for Malrang. Hook blind there to try and cancel a recall. Mickey will dodge away from it. And the TP back from Caps here will come in, and he'll lose nothing. Maybe that cannon minion. Nope. See if the shot comes through. Does he get it? No, he doesn't. So he loses a couple creeps off the back of that, but he got the gold from the Scuttle Crab, and he got the, uh, the vision from it as well, so that helps a lot. So you can see Maorang's just still level 3 on his fourth camp, five minutes in. Yikes, getting close to that level 5 on his second clear after yeah. basing. Three long swords to one. Jungle's already skewed in G2's favor. Very heavily skewed, reminiscent of game 1. Maorang, of course, hugely impactful on the Lee Sin in game two. And the Wukong does scale pretty well as we get later into the game, but definitely not the start that you want. I want to get to that level six a little bit faster, but so far behind now. Maybe a bit of a sigh of relief when Trimby walks into this river and he sees bot crabs up. Pick up that camp, just try to get as many as he can. Get towards that level six. So, see Larson and Caps just juking it out, getting towards that level six very, very soon. The flashes of uh, the bot lane should be up very soon as well. So no threat of a kill. As Yike moves his way down, Marang will pick up that crab. Finally taking over level 4, which is big. Trimby, a uh, bit of a whip there on the hook, but doesn't need to connect. We'll just sidestep there on the arrow from the Varus. So this is, yeah, this is just an Emax Jarvan, isn't it, with Aerie. Mickey's E, spam poke onto comp, and the Sivir just wants to catch waves. Now, I think Yike's here saying, there's a pink ward there. Mickey, go face check that bush. I'm ready right behind you. And there's no jungler in, so, oh, Larson. Larson going in, hits the E, the charm now coming out, the dash back out to safety, but Larson holds on to his ultimate. Cap's forced to use his, so that's a cooldown trade in favor of Larson. Yeah, nice mechanics from both of them oh, there. Oh, no, sorry, he did use his ult. Yeah, it's an ultral trade. Yep. Eric's gonna queue over this wall so he won't get spotted on the dragon. Cap's gonna take the pink, get a little bit of honey fruit. Nice mechanics from both. Cap's dashing away, landing the charm on the back half in the shroud. Um, so excited to see how that pans out in later fights because Akali and Ari, a lot of dashing around when they're towards level 11, level 12, will be fun to watch. Malrang still level 4, trying to take his Krugs, that'll level him up, but all the meanwhile, Yike will get a Dragon. Larson still trying to trade really aggressively. Mercury trades, first item means that Caps' damage is little to none. Yeah. He just kind of stand in his face, dishing out damage. If Caps uses his mana here to chunk Larson, then it's going to be even harder for him to push out the wave, so you can see he cues the wave itself. Doesn't even bother doing damage, and then he's going to take a base. Yeah. 
Larson made it through the hardest levels of this laning phase. Once that ultimate's back off cooldown, he can try to force another play. Meantime, on the bottom line, Mickey just laying down some poke. Trimby continuing to fish for hooks here, checking in on the top side of the map. Not too bad overall for the Gragas, all things considered. Looking at the last two games, this is obviously very, very slow. Seven minutes in, no one's really flashed. No one's really used anything barring that level two gank from Malrang. Everyone's summoners are back up. And uh, both of them have pretty good level six fights. Now, Yike is very close to that level six. He can get a creep here, ding over and look for a gank or some kind of setup. Maybe he suspects Malrang's around here and he wants to hide in the bush. Shigenda will need to get the next wave under tower to make it crash. And I think Yike's in that middle brush. One more creep, that cannon will die and he'll get level six. Now the setup is looking pretty juicy. The walking forward, instant knock up, knock back. Body slam can follow, coming in from Broken Blade, trying to get out of that ulti. Is Shigenda now running out to safety, zooming away? He's gonna live! He is gonna live. Yikes, Q's up now. He needs to charge the Q. Broken Blade Broke needs to tank. tank. Body Ooh. slam forward with the flash, finishing the kill. First blood and a little bit of a shh coming Larson. out on that emo. Larson's got the blast cone, he's got the ult. Broken Blade knows he's around here. Barrel will slow him down. Larson knows it's in there because of the ghost power, so he tries to dash. He has to flash ult here, but then Broken Blade has the body slam, so he can't commit for it. We'll have to catch the wave. Caps will push in mid, and they'll lose a couple creeps in there. He needs to fix his top wave, help his top laner out. And while well executed gank on the top side. For G2, ultimately able to grab that kill, burning a bit more resources maybe than they would have liked to in the form of Broken Blade's Flash, but taking Shigenda down a notch there, shutting him down at least a little bit here in this early game. Herald's up. That's a Vi ult on cooldown. Gragas hasn't based yet. Larson's ready to fight. He has still got access to that ultimate, so Koi are saying, well, let's force it. If G2 want to fight this without their ults, let's have it. But yeah, Yikes going to base. Makes a lot of sense. They've got the first dragon, maybe start stacking those up, drop all top side pressure, let them push out, get broken blade base, and then start focusing on the spot side of the map. They'll be very happy with that trade. So we'll see how Koi uses this Herald. Of course, their late game insurance is always going to be comp on the Severe, but Mickey's getting close to that level six. Shigenda has no flash. That could be some kind of opening if Mickey can find a roam timer up towards the top side. Yep. Landry coming out, Trimby getting Malrang back to his own jungle up the jungle clear speed here. Larson left unattended on the top side and the back end of that play, so we'll get a plate back. And the gold dead even, really the only difference at this stage, is going to be the Herald versus the Dragon. And as you highlighted, just have to see where Koi want to put that. Breaking open mid also wouldn't feel too bad in a game like this. Agreed. Pot crabs up, and uh, Mickey's going to spot that out. That'll be a nice camp for Malrang to pick up. His ult's coming off cooldown too, so the first play will pick up there for Hans and Mickey, trying to keep this bot push. Trimby's lane assignment is a bit weird right now for Koi. Of course, you've got the cannon mid. You really want the Akali there. Need to swap up here, Shigenda, but he wants to catch this wave. A bit frustrating for Larson because he loses a wave if he doesn't go top right now. But they're going to have to swap that up no matter what. Yikes gets spot on vision, gets that crab, has red buff up, 1 minute 40 seconds on the dragon. I think that's what like I said earlier, they've got their eyes on. Yep. And a lot of potential burst damage could, could come in here from this G2 bottom lane between the J4 rotation as well as the Varus. So Comp, while he has the cleanse, while he has the spell shield, Trimby going to be very vulnerable, did not go after Shock, which, you know, to be fair, Thresh hasn't gone in a very long time, but is not incredibly tanky, all things considered. Koi looking for a fight here, I think. Trimby going to place the pink down. Malrang doesn't get spotted. Mickey wants to contest that pink. E down, gives vision, sees Malrang. Says the jungler's bot side. He has that herald, so any kind of opening in bot is perfect for Marwang to place that down. But G2 not giving an inch, waiting for their jungler. Larson was trading really aggressively in mid. A little bit of an experience lead for him is first into the river. Yike trying to get information in this tri bush. Marwang's on a face check. Marwang gonna get hit here. The combo has to come through if they want to burn through Marwang. But Marwang already popping one half of the ult and immediately Koi confidently taking the fight. Hansel gonna try to fire one back. The flash out to safety. Hans will get one in exchange, but a two for one in favor of Koi. Nice roam from Larson. He knew that bu that bush was a little bit dangerous. Called Malrang to face check it. He's right behind him. He ends up dying, yes, but two kills over to Koi. We'll be back towards mid. Lost the wave for a Trimby. On to Hans, Tom will connect. Yes, That's the lane. Turn now bringing him back. He's trapped in the box, and Comp can just take this one. Easy peasy, Koi bot lane. That's a big kill, isn't it? Onto the Sivir. We'll get the wave in, start getting a bit of a lead here. That Siri is going to be a nightmare for G2 to deal with later on with that spell shield, with summoners, with the thresh and the amount of dive that Koi have. It's going to be a bit hard to manage them through the fight. So yeah, Malrang face checks knowing that they could be in this bush. Double knock up. Larson comes in. Mickey tries to escape after they use their initial damage, but Larson then R2 is over the wall. Flash hook from Trimby misses. Flash away from Hans. And that was where he lost that summoner spell to which Trimby punished a little bit later on. Shigenda and Broken Blade trading ults up towards his top side. I expect Broken Blade probably, you know, knocked him into Look for the body slam, the ult had to be used to disengage, but that doesn't matter because Koi are swapping. They're yep. sending their severe Thresh up here. Malrang has the Herald, so now it's a... Caps already burned the charm. Oh. 
Oh, on the edge there. Larson, good pressure on this Akali. We talk of Larson as this mage player, but right now he's very active in this game. Tries to roam top to cover the gank every time the camera pans towards mid. He's winning out on these trades. So now here comes the race. G2 know that they need to get these plates. Varus has got a little bit of attack speed from the build. Does she get that? Roll the dice here. Yike could be in that brush, but he's also could be on Drake. And Shigenda's taking that 50 50 to try to get a little bit of this wave. Oh, on the dragon, though. You guessed right. Dragon's dead. Harold will be placed top now, though. I think there's a world where Koi could maybe go for two towers if they keep showing bot or if they overforce a dive onto Shigenda. Larson's TP's up in five seconds. That'll cover the bot dive if they want to go for it. So Vi queued over the wall there on the minimap. So Yike stashed over. He's in the tri bush. Does Shigenda want to stay? Can Larson TP in and save him? Two plays happening here on the cross maps. Dive for dive. Broken Blade now needs to make his way out. Tries to flash. He needs to get the Herald on the hook, but is forced to flash. Oh, it's going to hit, isn't it? Herald is going to connect here, so big damage onto the tower, but there's no wave to follow up now. Shigenda going to make it out from the dive. Broken Blade's ult's up soon, but I think Koi wants to keep going here. They see the bot lane bots. They saw Yike as well. Larson can cover any kind of bot play. Caps has already used the TP as well, but yeah, the Gragas has good wave clear. Let's see if Larson wants to. No, he TP's mid. Maybe I thought, you know, he could TP bot here, play with G2 a bit. He is quite strong on this Akali. It's going to take him a while to still get that, but it's going to be Shigenda TPing in instead. He has the ult up in five, and G2, I don't think they can stay around any longer. Nope. And of course, had that window of opportunity because of the trade of alts on the top side of the map. But both teams really taking advantage of the fact that neither the Gragas nor the Kennen had alt to kind of push for a little bit more. The difference, of course, Koi had the Herald, and that's going to net them a little bit of a gold advantage here. Ultimately, though, that Herald, uh, when all is said and done, 700 gold, maybe more. Yes, taking down a tower. Yes, having that pressure point on the map. But G2 is still up to Drake, something that has to be respected, especially because this time around, it's an ocean. That's the soul that does matter and is going to feel pretty impactful in a game like this. It's going to be very, very messy team fights, isn't it? Kennen, Wukong, Akali trying to get on top of a Gregas Vi, who are also going in the Jarvan. It's kind of like the AD carries have to fend for themselves, where a Trimby can peel and Mickey goes in is the only alternative. Yes. Uh, so I think when there's a dragon fight, the first person to go in, it's just going to be an absolute explosion of ults. I see if they can find any flanks. Yeah. And one of the big things is Han does have exhaust, which is going to count a lot as he gets dove on later in the game. But Sivir, yes, on hit Varus, if he has the space to maneuver, is very hard to out damage. But Sivir is the OG hyperscaling AD carry. As Mickey overstaying there, trying to get a bit of vision down. The second ult he's going to come out. He goes golden comp, just waiting. The hook going to come in. Flash oh. out to Zanky, but comp hits him with a boomerang blade anyway. There will be no safety this time around. The Chomp hitting on the comp. Now immediately they're gonna get the fight kicked off, but it is Yike in no man's land. He's not getting anything done. G2 now trying to turn. G2 now trying to clash, but there's Larson Lush, Lush. on the backside. The Akali waiting. Has to hold his breath. Has to make sure these cooldowns count. Now looking to finish off Han Sama. The Mortal Shield bow will not be enough. Broken Blade now next on the list is Koi. Monstering G2 on the bottom side of the map. Taking their time here. Shigenda just looking to set up the stun. Berlin coming alive for Koi. Larson wants it. He's under the tower. One versus five. Malray needs to drop the aggro. They need to let it reset onto the cannon. Broken Blade has the body slam to work with. Mickey's quite close, but yeah, he goes down. Yeah. Mickey misses the combo. Flag Maybe he dies here. Mickey, no. He's just he's going to get one back, and that's going to be big. That's at least a little bit of gold in return. Mickey trying desperately to survive. Boomerang Blade back in. It's going to hit him. Larson going to take a bit of poke in exchange. But overall, Koi, massive fight. Instantly 3k, almost 4k now in the lead. That is game deciding. Broken Blade investing the TP, trying to help his team out. Mickey greeting for a little bit of vision there. Nice punish by Malrang. I didn't think, I don't think he expected there to be a Wukong in that barsh. And when he used the E, he can't really flash out. Pops the stopwatch and then G2 try to take the fight anyway. They try to salvage a losing play. So we'll see this again. Malrang hiding in the brush. He sees Mickey E and he knows that he has to go for this. Waits for him to get close to the wall and then pops the ult again knowing that he can't flash here. Stopwatch comes in, but watch this hook. The Q from Comp gets Mickey even though he flashes to the left. Yike gets slowed, gets chunked to half. Broken Blade TP's in, so it's three from the top side, one from the bot. Comp spell shields, cleanses out on the charm. Q flash from Yike misses, and now he's all alone on top of four. The Kennel doing work. Trimby trades off, but then Larson comes from behind. Caps only has one tick left, goes towards the left side. Marang manages to pick up that kill. Broken Blade can't find a single target, and Hans has no one left to appeal for him. Broken Blade eventually dies. Mickey gets one back, and now the hook goes wide. Caps fishing. Charm not going to connect. Death to finish off Trimby here. Sidestep on the ult. Monsama is big. G2 now need to retreat. They burned a lot of relevant ultimates here. Herald's Malrang. up. Malrang does a lot of damage, doesn't he? With the Sunderer. Herald's up. Does G2 really want to fight this? They just lost the Ari ult. They lost the Varus ult. 
charge if the Q is going to go over the wall. Maybe they're looking for Shigenda. No flash on him. Yike has the ult if they want to lock him down. That should be an easy kill, perhaps. No stopwatch either. Broken Blade's there to make sure. Alti. He can try to buy as much time as possible. The rest of his team tries to get something done in the mid lane. Shigenda now needs to get away, but the Q will connect a kill. A takedown now as Caps is going to grab that one. Mid lane going to break in favor of Koi, however. Going to get that mid tower. Maybe they can collapse up here. There's no tower on that top side. Can Larson stop any bases? Rocket oh, the Rocket Belt got two. two. Where is he going to go? Where are they going to side? They're both splitting. Cap's now running. But he's running into no man's land. He's running into Koi territory. He can clear the wave and accept his fate. On the hunt, burned. Cap's going to get the charm, but there's not a lot left here to get taken out. He's going to go down, but look at Hans on the minimap. He's saying, well, my mid laner's going to die. Maybe I can solo out Drake here. As much as Yike might be on the top side, G2 are screaming for a cross map. Bot tower, Drake, anything. They have about a 15 to 20 second time window where Koi needs to catch mid wave and move back down towards this bot side. Shigenda doesn't have TP. You can see everyone just gravitating down here. Can G2 get it? No wave for the tower. Should be an easy pickup. We'll see if Koi responds with the Heralds or if they try to collapse and find some kills off the back of this objective. I think G2 should be safe enough to get out. And at the end of the day, this is G2's last out. This is Ocean Drake. This is this Ocean Soul. Yeah. It's a 2.3k gold lead for the Sivir on the enemy team. And you saw what happened in the previous fight. Caps burned everything. Yike burned everything. They still could not kill Comp. Ooh. They're overloading Bolt here. Maybe they're looking for Shigenda again. Stops on the recalls coming through. Hans is going to cancel the recall. Yikes here. Mickey's here. And Koi expect all of them to have based by now. But Myrang's on the cover. It's a 2v4 and a tower. Lock up on a broken blade. What's the call going to be? TP now being burned. They're looking to isolate and lock down Maorang. Maorang using the second spin here. They're going to take out the jungler of Koi. They're going to take down the tower. And now Caps is on the hunt. Caps whipping on the charm is going to be big, but there comes the knock of a G2. Signs of life on the bottom side of the map as they take a tower and two kills. Catching Koi off guard. G2 went for the dragon. 30 seconds where they're all in fog of war. Koi made the gamble. Probability says they probably based to try to retake topside and push out mid, but no, they overstayed. They lost a couple creeps for it, but. They managed to make a play happen, they get the tower, they get two kills. Lost nothing in response other than Caps' TP. Should be in time to catch his top wave, and now Koi can't do the Herald either. They might be able to do it now, actually. So much vision on this top side. Comp could try and solo it out with Trimby. Shigenda has the teleport, so that objective is on the cards, but it looks like they don't want to go for it just yet. Need to get that mid push at the moment. All the respawns coming through. It's going to slow down Koi a little bit, have to rethink. Have to make sure that they're still making the right calls in this game. It's a classic G2 maneuver. Part of the reason why they're a terrifying team to play against even when they're at a deficit is that they're willing to sacrifice lanes. They're willing to overload a side lane and do something that you might not expect. But Koi, very much still in control of this game. First to set up on the Herald. They've got control. They've got mid lane push. And that's going to be big. G2 haven't even broken Koi's mid lane tier 1 tower yet. They've only broken the bot lane tier 1. So Koi has so much passive control over the map right now. So many tools to stop G2 from entering the pit. And that means second Herald of the game will go to them. Three minutes and 15 seconds till Ocean Soul is on the cards for G2. Coin need to be in total control of the map. Charm's gonna go wide, Hook's gonna go wide. Caps on this Ari. Normally you see Spellbook Ari, Everfrost, Banshees. He's going full damage, Glass Cannon. Ludens into Rabidons or Shadow Flame. Will be a threat onto Comp, but his flash just came back up. Yike on towards the spot side again. It looks like they've tried to isolate out Shigenda a couple times now. Looking once more, but he's very close to his tier two. You can see Trimby's offering a little bit. Maybe if he oversteps after this wave, there's a potential for a kill, but they'll lose vision of him after the wave dies. But he's playing very, very safe, isn't he? Baron's up in three, has the TP, needs to be ready to respond. A little bit down in XP, Broken Blade, 1,000 gold leads. See how much he can get done in these fights as well. And I think good heads up play from Shigenda just to be more cautious. Not only because G2 have been paying him so much attention, but oftentimes when Kennen is in the meta, uh, what is so important to playing against him is just to get him to burn his ult in a non-team fight scenario. So when the next fight comes around, even if he's behind yeah. in gold, you've made that major ability no longer a threat, no longer an issue. Because yes, Shigen is behind in itemization. Yes, the scoreline is not great, but a level 11 Kennen, two points in that ultimate, can still do so much damage if he finds a flank. It really can. And I think these last few minutes of sequence in, in the last game, I feel like Koi have basically decided um, if they're not sure where they are, they're probably there, is, yep. is the way they're playing against G2. Everyone's playing really safe on sides. You can see they looked for Shigenda, now they're looking for Larson. Very similar story to last game. And it's only when they have the pushing waves and they can match these numbers that they'll feel confident. Larson. He was going to look for a yike there. Yeah. Maybe just try to get a bit of damage down. And I think the big difference, too, is that while Koi are once again in the driver's seat, similar to Game 2, is that G2 have a bit more agency to fight back, which means it's that much more important for Koi to give them that bit of respect. You can see how safe they are. Look at Shigenda. He's still next at Tier 2, despite showing uh, Mickey, Caps, and Yike up towards this top side. Herald comes down. They just want to get this tower, get the 600 gold. Does G2 engage? Something. Mickey on the backside. They're just immediately going to get taken out. A lot of damage, but they're not quite going to finish it. Yes, they are! 
just gone in the blink of an eye. So much damage from that Divine Sunder or Wukong. Tower's gone down as well. A lot of gold into Larson. They have TP on Shigen. They're ready. They could look for some kind of Baron start, but they used a couple of ultimates to get that kill. No need to rush it. One minute on the Dragon. If you overstay on this Baron and G2 push you off towards the top side, they can beeline towards that Dragon and rush it down. Cap trying to stop some bases here. Buy some time for the rest of G2. Mickey up in eight seconds. Needs to get on towards this bot side. Place some wards down. This is a position for Koi where they can say, we're actually just going to go Baron. You can deny our soul, but we're going to pick that up. So we'll see how they dissect the map because their AD and support are moving up towards this top side. Could be just a bit of smoke and mirrors here. Red buffs up. Should be putting a little bit of sneaky vision down. G2 should be aware that they can look for a trade of objectives here for the Baron. Ooh, hook over. Just going to check for vision. There's a blue orb there. They can't sneak it. Taking out the vision of G2, making sure they're doing their due diligence, making sure they're not giving anything up. TP down at the bottom side, four caps. Ready to contest this Drake. 24 seconds, Maorang in the darkness. Maorang waiting. This is the clone to make it out to safety. Broken Blade can body slam forward, but he won't take the risk. Shigenda, level 12, has the ultimate, has the stopwatch. It's going to be a big problem for G2 if they can't keep their eyes on him. Koi, want to fight this? G2 want to fight this? Hiding in the bush. They have a pink if Maorang gets hit by a charm here. Charm Bates is going to be big, but clean from Maorang. Now needs to walk away. Good up front burst damage trying to finish off the jungler. Caps now dashing out to safety. Broken Blade needs to get out of dodge as well. Hansom on the backside for now untouched. So many of the cooldowns burned. Yike off to the side. G Mickey on the backside. Boy, getting chipped away at. It's very chaotic, isn't it? Barris ult down, Ari ult down, the Akali ult was used. It's Shigenda and Larson you need to keep your eyes on, but now Larson is a lot weaker. G2 have control around the pits. Shigenda is Koi's threat right now. If they can get a ward in that pit, he could look to flash over onto Maren the rest of G2. Around. Trimby flash forward on the hook. He is going to connect on the Broken Blade, and that is massive. That could be fight to sign it, but now there's a TP in the middle of the pit. They're trying to turn and burn. Yank throwing out the ultimate caps, taking out Koi. Coming together as a death ball to decimate G2 around the pit. They take away the dragon, and now G2, they've overcommitted. They've overstayed their welcome. The Shuriken Flip will not connect, but here comes Trimby over the wall. The Hex Flash in. Mickey knows it's now or never. He has to turn, but there is nothing left for G2 in the fight. The ultimate from the cannon. Malrank to finish a double for Comp and an ace for Koi. Five for zero. We'll see if they can get an objective off of that. 10 seconds on Yikes. Respawn. Again, that's pushing out bottom and has TP. I don't think they can get a Baron. G2 stopped the soul, but the dive didn't work. I think Yike went in way too early there. G2 actually had a pretty good position after the hook to chunk out the front line of Koi. Broken Bay tries to body slam away from it. It looks bad initially, but Hans is free and getting some damage down, but Yike goes so deep. Caps flashes in thinking, well, this is our only choice. This is your only option. If you only used ult, I have to follow up, but I don't have ult. So I'll flash Q, see if you can get the kill. Turns out they cannot, and then it's just a 3v5, right? Koi just needs to take it really slow. Larson doesn't have the ult, just push them back, sandwich them, and uh, there's no escape for the rest of G2. Five kills over to Koi on that Sivir. A couple picked up. Comp's only getting stronger. And right now, at this moment, in this game state, Comp's going to back third item on the Sibber. Two, maybe a little bit of extra. 7-0-9. I mean, this, that was the window of opportunity it closed on G2. They're going to get another one in 3 minutes and 45 seconds, but Koi are in total control. Yeah. On paper, they should win every single team fight from here on out. So I think Koi can start to force this Nash. The only pain they have is that Scuttle Crab is down, so they have a little bit of vision to work with. Looking over the wall here, Yike. Hang on a second, he's going really deep here. Mickey is not the damage dealer you need next year. He's going to the Trimby. They're ready to pitch for a play. G2, are they going to full commit to this? Looking to burn down Trimby before anything else can happen. Cap's going to miss on the charm, and the rest of Koi now descending. Mickey trying to get out to safety, but they kind of just appear and then disappear yeah. just like that. G2 really getting lost in the chaos, looking for a pick, looking for some way into this river. They were kind of getting choked out towards the top side. G2 going to try and look for this mid-tier one, but Koi are going to pick up an easy Baron. Shigenda's marking the rest of the members of G2 in case they want to contest. I think with this Baron, they can start to threaten G2's base, start to break open that mid and bot tier two, and then play for this next dragon. They're waiting for Trippy. Get five Baron buffs, why not? Trippy. Ooh. Power I mean, this friendship. is. I'm just blown away. Right oh, wait, he's smiling. Did he, I'm not sure if the. Did Trippy get it? I hope he got it. On the right side, it looked like he was one second away from respawn. He did get it. He did get it. So, five man Baron buffed up. Koi. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I am. Very impressed. I was not sure what to think. Koi were coming off a two-game losing streak at the end of the regular season. They came into this series. Game one, I was like, ah, oh, it's done. It's over. But game two, they weathered the storm of G2's more creative drafts. And game three, they've just been better. Maorang, a monster in games two and three. Shigenda, a monster in games one and two. Comp and Trimby really showing up in this game three. And Larson, pretty consistent throughout, outside of the game one. So 
this is a team that I think we we kind of have to remind ourselves every once in a while that they are that force to be reckoned with because they have had these bouts of inconsistency. Yeah. But this is the team you need to show up against because these, this team, G2, are, were the expected favorites yeah. for so many people, but now Koi are so handedly uh, dismantling them. I mean, I think Koi are just a threat in the best of series. If you just took that game one and it was a best of one, you'd say G2 is probably one of the best teams in the league and Koi are struggling throughout the rest of the split, right? Put it into a best of three. Koi find their footing, they manage to deal with G2's draft in game two, and then they play very reserved and calm, and they know their win conditions well. No mistakes, Barry, from Koi. It's only Shigenda that was targeted so much by the rest of G2, and now the push comes in. Comps on towards his bot side, trying to get these waves stacked up. See if they can threaten a base break. It's really hard because Shigenda doesn't really want to show. Trimby's kind of playing Lantern for Comp to walk up, and Caps and Hans are hiding around the corner to look for Comp if he oversteps. No flash on that Sivir, so I think he can lock him up in the Jarvan ultimate. I think Trimby does need to play Lantern. Does G2 pull the trigger here? Waiting for an opportunity. Shigenda is not there. Mickey gets hooked. Mickey goes gold. He finally has the hourglass, but now it's Hansama on the backside. Hansama has no life. Hansama has no room to play. Finally, they'll take down Maorang. No! He's just been knocked into the backline, and out. Maorang gets the kill. The Greg is so betrays the team, and now Shigenda leaping in, but he's left a little bit too far. Goes golden in the final moments. Uses the stopwatch to get away from the charm and yike. Desperate to do anything, but that is it. They are done. They are dusted. Koi have taken down the favorites in this league. Koi have moved up. Koi will face BDS tomorrow for a chance in the best of fives. Game one was rocky, but game two and three belongs to Koi, and they have dominated G2 in the match today. Fantastic showing in the match of the week. Trimby's looking for some spawn kills, isn't he? Hook on to Mickey, doesn't get the flay. They want a bit more blood, don't they? Don't want to end it just yet. They're looking for the next hook. Is it going to land? He thought that he'd queue to the... Oh, he did queue to it, but he's going to die. And Comp is legendary. Outstanding performance from him. Want to bounce back for Koi. G2, maybe back to the drawing board. I feel like when these early leads don't come through, it becomes a very, very tough game. And um, yeah, Koi's map movements, their, their, their prediction of G2's movements around sides and how they want to look for these picks. The only time they really got caught off guard was when they overloaded on that bot tower and got two kills. Other than that, they really couldn't find much overall. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed. I think that I was skeptical with the, of the Lee Sin, Maorang popped off. I was skeptical with the Blue Kong, Maorang popped off. And I think that this is a team that, when they are playing in form, when they have a clear idea of what they want to be doing in the meta, they are such a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I like that they've got these aspects of some strong individual lane matchups, like the Kennen on the top side, with this reliable backbone of scaling in the form of the Sivir. Uh, it just feels like well-rounded compositions, and there are you know moments where a composition as limited as the G2 composition in Game 1, where it has very clear, very strong points, can break through what Koi are trying to do, but when that doesn't happen, oh. Koi just take over the map, and damn, they look good doing it. A little bit hairy in the, state, in the early stages. You know, Marek's going for these early ganks, trying to blow summoners. Maybe the plays could have gone a bit more in their favor because he fell behind. But I saw Larson just trading really heavily onto Caps. Yeah, she get that. Yeah, weathering the storm in top. And then, yeah, Comp just scaling up, getting some kills. But you can vote for your player of the series at LEC on Twitter. Malarang, Larson, or Comp. I don't know, it's a tough call. I think Larson's Lissandra was good. His Akali was really good. And to be fair, the Silas was good. Uh, but it was, it was very scrappy in that mid lane. There was, that was the game where a lot of their plays just kind of didn't quite go in their favor. Yeah, the 3v3 wasn't yeah. Yeah, in their favor. They kind of naturally lost that 3v3 because of the chain CC, right? Malin yes. came back in a big way in that game despite a pretty big early deficit too. It's tough. It's a tough call. Yeah, Malrang's team. I think Malrang is... literally didn't get to play League of Legends in game one, so that's a tough one for yeah. me. Now, no discredit to his ability to play. It was just that he sat Zeri on a side lane and the game was over before he could do anything. Yeah, I think Malrang's kind of creativity around the mid game and just sitting in brushes was great. Yeah, fantastic to see. Well, that's enough from us. Let's head on down to Trimby and Frankie to hear more about that series. Thank you very much. Trimby, I think there might be a few teams watching right now taking notes. So how do you dismantle a team like G2? Ah, come on. I mean... G2 didn't do that well in regular split, and we didn't do as well, so even though it was match of the week, it was not like best of the best teams, right? And yeah, G2 is a great opponent to play against. They're really, they're crazy in drafts. They do very, a lot of good things in game that just makes you, makes your game just hard, basically. And yeah, that's how it goes versus them. But you beat them in Malmo and you beat them in the regular season. So there's something about Koi that takes on G2. Yeah, I mean, right now it's going better and better and yeah it feels like versus them specifically we get to actually fight them back in a sense where before we would kind of just give them you know what they want just like not really fight it kind of scale and now we're actually trying to like contest which you know is good because we also learn from that and yeah we're doing better and better actually fighting together and making sure we are having 
either advantages or we're not falling too, too much behind because of them forcing. How was your confidence in the series? Because when you were playing Leona in that first game, they were targeting you and you had a tough time. And then over the course of the series, you came alive, Trimby. So talk know. to me about I mean, that game, I think my Leona game was like one of the better ones still. I feel like I was doing a lot of good stuff anyway, because I think if I didn't do that stuff, that game would be really lost fast. Uh, and yeah, you know, when you play Leona and you don't die, it's kind of grief, and if you die, you look like a griefer, but that's just how it goes, sadly. But yeah, other two games, it was, I was set up also well in the draft, but yeah, I had like picks that I knew I would perform regardless, and even though I was not too confident, because yeah, things were not going too great lately, I still think that I put on a good show, and yeah, overall, my team was playing really well. So now you're becoming a team that's a group stage team rather than a regular season king, I guess. Uh, yes. Talk to me about the matchup against BDS tomorrow. Uh, wow. They are the team that just, yeah, plays good League of Legends, I would say. Like, they, they're drafting well, like, for their priorities. They do a lot of good stuff in game. And yeah, seems like they're like one of the teams, you know, that it's not easy to contest and like win against because they always, even though they fall behind, they somehow always get a chance to come back, I would say. But very quickly, do they play better League of Legends than you? Well, I think we can beat them, so let's let's just figure it out tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, why not? Let's figure it out tomorrow, <laughs> as the man says. I mean, we have right. to ask, yeah. 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 Well, right now, let's send it over to the post-game lobby because Law and Goldborg will be there to greet you. Thank you.